Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the patriarchs of Israel. Abraham and Sarah had Isaac. Isaac and his wife Rebekah had twin boys, Jacob and Esau. Or should that be Esau and Jacob? Esau was the firstborn. He was a man of the field. He was the hunter. He was his father's favorite. Jacob was his mother's favorite, a tent dweller. Jacob, well, his name means supplanter. One who follows on the heels of another and wants to take over, to replace someone who's ahead of him. And that is exactly who Jacob was. One day when Jacob was cooking stew, Esau came in from the field hungry. He demanded, let me eat some of that red stew. And instead of providing for his brother, Jacob saw an opportunity. I'll sell you some. He sold his brother some stew and in exchange took the birthright. That is to say, a double portion of the inheritance when his father died. Jacob wasn't content getting the birthright. He wanted Isaac's blessing. When Isaac thought his life was coming to an end, he told Esau to go hunting and prepare what he could for what he thought would be his final meal. Rebekah overheard the plan. And instead, she had Isaac go and kill two goats. And she prepared a meal. She had Isaac put on the skins of the goats because Esau was hairy. And she had him put on Esau's best clothing. And Jacob took this meal into his father and convinced his father that he really was Esau. And he got his father's blessing. Esau was not impressed with this. Esau was planning to take Jacob's life as soon as Isaac died. So Jacob was sent to live with his uncle Laban. The Lord blessed Jacob and made him prosperous. And at the end of 20 years of serving his uncle Laban, the Lord told Jacob to return to his homeland with his wives and all of his possessions. So trusting in the Lord's command, Jacob leaves Laban and returns home. Jacob hadn't been home in 20 years. Last he knew, Esau wanted to end his life. And so he sends a message to Esau. Thus says your servant Jacob, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed until now. I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, male servants and female servants. I have sent to tell my Lord in order that I might find favor in your sight. The messengers returned, saying Esau was coming to meet Jacob with 400 men. Jacob panicked. He divided everything he had into two camps, thinking that if Esau attacked, at least maybe half of his possessions might survive. And then Jacob calls out to the Lord, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, O Lord, who said to me, Return to your country and to your kindred that I may do you good. I am not worthy of the least of all the deeds of steadfast love and all the faithfulness that you have shown to your servant. For with only my staff I crossed the Jordan, and now I have become two camps. Please deliver me from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him that he may come and attack me, the mothers, with the children. But you said, I will surely do you good and make your offspring as the sand of the sea, 
which cannot be numbered for multitude. Jacob knows the Lord. He knows that God has promised to bless him, that through him would come the promised Messiah. And Jacob trusted the Lord to bring him thus far, but all of a sudden, in the face of his brother's army, he panicked. He was afraid. Jacob knows that he's manipulated his brother, both for the birthright and for the blessing. And even though God had sent Jacob back to his homeland, Jacob ultimately didn't trust that God was going to protect him. And so Jacob reminds the Lord of his promises. And then, just to be on the safe side, he sends an envoy with some gifts for his brother. Bribe. So Jacob sends the camps ahead. And he stays behind. And this finally brings us to where our Old Testament lesson for today picks up. Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Jacob doesn't know who is wrestling with him although he has a clue that it is the Lord. They wrestle throughout the night, and then the text tells us he touched his hip socket. And it kind of gives the image of the Lord as they're wrestling, taking his finger and touching the hip socket, and Jacob responding in pain. The text is a little bit more earthy than that. No, it's more like the Lord grabbed Jacob, and dislocated his hip. The man then says, let me go, for the day has broken. And Jacob says, I will not unless you bless me. He knows it's the Lord, as if he doesn't already have the Lord's blessing. But the Lord does bless him. He asks, and what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he, the man, the Lord, said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. Now, we've gone through a lot of Jacob's life up to this point. But when you think of it, most of what we have heard the pain, the angst, the suffering. It was all unnecessary. It all came because Jacob wanted to supplant. If he had simply trusted the Lord, all that he did in tricking his brother and his father and working for his uncle for 20 years, it would have all been unnecessary. Because the Lord can bless who he wants to bless. He wouldn't have had to send a bribe ahead. And Jacob didn't need to demand the Lord's blessing as he wrestled with him. In the end, it all meant nothing. You see, God doesn't work by appearances or by human standards. God shows mercy on whom he will show mercy. And he had promised that the inheritance would come through Jacob that the Lord promised that through him the Messiah would come. Saints of God, what are the things that you think or say or do to try and get ahead, hoping to get God's blessing? There are preachers out there who will tell you that God's blessing will come to you if you are more obedient or if you give more to the church. Or if you're a blessing more to other people. And there are blessings in all of these things that happen. There's blessings in obeying the law and in caring for others. But you don't get God's blessing by these things or by being an optimist. At the end of the day, that doesn't work. No, you receive God's blessings totally and completely outside of you. The Lord will show mercy on whom he will show mercy. Your sinful nature 
is that you want to supplant God. You want not to put God in front, to fear, love, and trust in Him above all things. But you want to take that role on yourself. To strive against God, to have your own way. If you will ultimately do that, you will land up in hell under the judgment of God. We don't need to wrestle with him spiritually. We're told that in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting the trespasses against them. That is to say, God is at peace with you through Christ. And the implication then is that he's imploring you through Christ that you would be reconciled to him. God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us so that in him, in Christ, we might become the righteousness of God. The promises of God are yea and amen in Christ. What is God's blessing to Jacob? It is that through him all the nations will be blessed. That through him, through his line, will come the Messiah. God promised and ultimately did bring Jacob safely home. And here's ultimately the most amazing thing. God gave Jacob a new name. May God prevail. That's what Israel means. May God prevail. And it was God who ultimately prevailed against Jacob, despite all of Jacob's strivings. And it's the same for you. God wants nothing more than that he would prevail in your life. And he has. When you were brought to the baptismal font, the pastor asked, and how is this child to be named? But that wasn't the name ultimately that you were given. Rather, God put his name on you. He put his name on you as the sign of the cross was put on your forehead and on your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. And by asking your name, that name was written in the Lamb's book of life. Your sins are forgiven. Forgiven through him who came in human flesh as a descendant of Israel, as a descendant of Jacob. And God's blessings on you, they aren't measured by what you can see in terms of material things, or who you have in your life, or how other people treat you. God's blessing is seen in Christ. To be blessed ultimately means that you are in a right relationship with God. That you are at peace with God. That God has shown you his favor. What was Jacob's response to being blessed? He asks for God's name. That he may in turn bless the Lord. That he may praise the Lord. God doesn't give Jacob his name. But you, you have been given the name of the Lord. Jesus, the Lord saves. Emmanuel, God with us. Jacob called the place that he wrestled with God, Peniel. For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. For you, it's it's almost the exact same thing. Your life in Christ has been delivered. And because of that, you will see God face to face. In Jesus' name, amen.